Hey guys, so welcome back to another review. In this episode, I'm going to take a look at a new screen recorder that I bought called Playclaw 5, which is the third screen recorder I've bought so far. <laughs> so I'm sort of wasting my money away here in screen recorders, but at least I can get some sort of accurate, you know, detail about which ones are good or not, since I have something to compare it to. So the reason I decided to get Playclaw 5 was that, you know, I was supposedly told that this one does not spoil the frame rate of your game while you, you know, record your gameplay. Um, this is a big issue. If you have done screen recording before, you may know that a lot of screen recorders, such as Fraps or Action or, you know, all the big ones out there, they may spoil your frame rate. And, you know, to me, while I do some sort of gameplay footage, I don't want to, you know, record it if it ends up spoiling my experience of the game because of low frame rate. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this program and I'm gonna give you guys my opinion on it and tell you guys about the issues I've had with this program while you know testing it out on my gameplays. So as you can tell, um, Playclaw 5 has the you know Windows 8 flat design on it. I personally love the flat design because I'm a web developer, I'm supposed to love it. <laughs> so um, you know it looks very simplistic because they used it. Um, even though it looks very simple, it is very detailed in its like settings and stuff. So don't get confused by that. As you can tell, we have a video setting, we have audio setting, screenshot settings, overlays, which is actually a really cool feature. I'm gonna show you guys in a second. We have the hotkeys, we have folders. You know you wanna save your your uh, video clips into, and then you have general settings. And then down here we have something called blacklist, which I'll tell you about also in a second. So let's go ahead and start with our um, video settings, which is called the encoder. Now, the encoder settings here, um, it took me quite a while to figure out what I need to set it to because I had huge issues recording with this, you know, screen recorder at start. Um, the, you know, default settings is the MJPEG. Uh, as you can tell, you have two settings here. You have fast and MJPEG. Um, and then you have some encoder settings here. And you can set it to like quality, you know, 50 being the worst, but the fastest one, and then 100 being the best, but the slowest one. Down here, you can use like some sort of compression setting after you're done recording. And then you can also choose if you want like a full range uh, color setting. Now, choosing the MJPEG has caused my video clips to come out of sync with the sound, which means that I would put it into my video editing program at the end, after I was done recording. And then my video would go a lot faster than my audio and it would start skipping and I couldn't even preview my video clip. I had to actually drag it onto my timeline and watch it that way and still it would be spoiled. And I spent countless hours online trying to figure out, you know, if other people had the same problem. And it seemed that nobody had. Well, at least some of them had, but everyone told them that, you know, it was because you didn't have the right uh, codec you know, inside your uh, editing program and stuff like that. But the solution I came up with that fixed it for me was that don't choose MJPEG, choose the fast one. Because the difference between these two is that your MJPEG actually records your gameplay and then uh, the raw file that you get afterwards is a video clip in itself. You can, you can play it and everything. Um, if you choose the fast setting, it compresses it. You cannot, you know, double click on your video clip afterwards, the raw file, and then watch it. You actually have to drag it into a video editing program. But doing it this way does not spoil your clip, which is my, you know, what I came up with. Um, so just a little thing for you guys, because I had huge issues with this. Down here, you can set your custom frame size. Um, I just set mine to 1600 and 900 because that's my screen size. You have to capture frame rate, and as you can tell, we have, you know, from five to 60, but you can also type in a customized, you know, frame rate if you want to. Compression threats, uh, I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, it's the better graphics card you have, you can set it higher, I know, but I don't know why you can set it higher. You can have a setting down here called smooth frame flow, which means that some times on your clips, you can improve like the, frame flow if you check this one off. I just decided not to. Draw cursor, you can actually click on this one and you know 
uncheck it and then you can't see your cursor while you record which you know if you play strategy games or something like that if you don't want people to see your cursor you can you know check that off uh max pre-coded buffer size this is actually a really cool feature um when you record a gameplay actually when you're not recording a gameplay but have play call 5 open uh let's say you play call of duty or something like some sort of shooting game and you get this awesome kill that you did not record you can actually click a shortcut button and it will actually save the last 10 seconds of your gameplay which is kind of cool um which means that play call 5 is always running in the background you know saving uh your gameplay just a little bit down here you have you can convert to stereo which i of course checked off if you don't have that it's gonna be mono uh which sucks you can mix the audio into one track. I have that on too. So I don't have like, you know, eight different tracks going down. Down here you have write audio and separate files. If you check this one off, you will get your video clip in one file and you get two audio files afterwards. One being for your um, uh, gameplay sound and then one being from your uh, microphone in case you had that, you know, added on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the audio. Uh, in the audio settings, you have, you know, you can use the default sources, which in my case is the speakers and my uh, microphone. Um, I can actually, I'm going to turn that off because I usually record my sound, you know, not inside my gameplay. Uh, I recommend you turn that off too if you do not record your own voice, you know, into the sound itself that is inside the game. So, just so you know. Over here we have screenshots. You can, of course, you know, do screenshots like any other thing. Uh, down here it says auto screenshot interval seconds. It actually automatically saves your screenshot, uh, which I set to 999, you know, 9 because I did not want it to save screenshots all the time. Down here we have a really cool feature called overlays, which is basically, um, you know, when you record a gameplay, you're going to have some sort of number. It could either be the frame rate or like a time that says how long have you been recording. Like it's going to be going on in the corner somewhere. Uh, down here you can choose what you want to see in the corner while you record. You can also decide if it's just you who wants to see it or if you should also show it on a video clip. So let's take the frame rate per second here. Um, I have it enabled in my overlay. It's actually the only thing I've enabled so far. And I can choose if I want you know, to show in video and screenshots. Of course I'm not going to do that because I don't want you guys to see it. But you can choose that as an option. You have like clock, you have CPU, you can tell, you know, the CPU details up there, the GPU details, image, if you want some sort of image, like a logo, if you have a logo for a YouTube channel, you can have that in the corner somewhere. Uh, you have like recording statistics, you have stopwatch, you have text, you have timer, team speak, and webcam, you can even have a webcam showing. I think this is kind of cool that you have all these customized settings you can uncheck and check off if you want to use them. Now, if you take a look at the hotkeys, you can tell that, well, this looks like any other screen recorder program. You can basically set your hotkey here. Uh, a couple of differences though. In here, you can actually pause the video with a, you know, clicking a certain button, or you can cancel the recording itself by clicking, you know, some sort of button if you want, decide you want to. Um, you can also choose to actually show the interface, what you're seeing right here, inside the game if you decide to you know do so if suddenly you want to change some settings you can do that folders inside the folders here you can of course decide where you want to save your you know your video clip or your screenshots um, it's very basic you just open it up and decide where you want to save it as a default it will save it on your videos folder inside your documents on your computer so you know I recommend that you get an excellent hard disk for this General settings, in here you can decide some different things like interface language, you know, if you want to minimize the, the whole window to the, like the system tray, if you want to start off the program minimized, uh, if you wanted to check on updates and stuff. Now, here's the difference though. Your screen recorder, you know, you can record both the desktop and gameplay with this screen recorder. Um, but if you're running on Windows 8, right now they're working on making this, you know, doable, but at the moment, you know, I can decide here desktop mode, okay, which means I can record my desktop. But look what happens when I click it. I get this one. Cannot initialize mail slot client, which means that because I'm on Windows 8, it is not optimized for it. So I cannot record my desktop, which kind of sucks. But, you know, 
it's just really annoying. But if you're not on Windows 8, you know, you can record your desktop all you want. Um, they say they're going to fix this in the future, which I hope they will, will do. Um, so I don't have to use, you know, a bunch of screen recorders for different things. But just so you guys know, let me just close this down. There we go. And the last thing is the blacklist. Now, let's say you have Steam open and you're playing a game. Of course, you know, if you play a game over Steam, it will have Steam open. Let's say you get a little notification or like a pop-up message from one of your friends and it suddenly, you know, jumps in front of the screen while you're recording. That can get a little annoying for someone. So you can actually blacklist. Uh, right now you can see I have Chrome blacklisted in here. I have something called Pro Tools, uh, which is my um, sound recording. And this means that if, you know, there's some sort of message that pops up from the program, the screen recorder is going to ignore it and just ignore whatever is in the back of that message. So it's not going to record the message itself, which I think is really kind of cool. So um, that's basically, you know, the settings and stuff. Um, just to give you guys my opinion of it, I got so angry when I bought this one because, you know, I mean, the gameplay itself was a hundred times better because I had no frame rate issues at all. It was like I didn't even have a screen recorder on. But the fact that I had to spend countless hours fixing, you know, the you know the fast video was so annoying. At least now that I fixed it, I'm happy. But, you know, as a gameplay recorder, they should at least have this fixed. Um, basically, the MJPEG is completely useless unless you have the correct codec inside your, you know, video editing program. Um, but other than that, you know, I have seen no issues with it. It's very easy to use. Um, you know, if you had to choose between Fraps and this one, I would recommend getting this one because Fraps has just huge files when you're done recording. It is a very good program, no doubt about it. Uh, most people use Fraps. But this one has more settings and stuff, you know, like the overlays and the blacklist, and it just makes it so much easier to use. So, yeah, um, that's basically it. I hope you guys found this useful. Uh, go ahead and leave a like if you did. It helps a lot. Uh, subscribe to see more stuff from my channel, and I will see you guys later.